Second Finance Minister Johari Abdul Ghani says Malaysia is not beholden to any party with regards to 1MDB's debt settlement with IPEC. Singapore Straits Times reported yesterday that the fund had repaid its debt, with funds raised from, among others, the sale of stakes in two companies to buyers linked to Chinese state-owned enterprises. According to Bernama, Johari was asked today if the ministry would be indebted to Beijing. In response, he said that MOF is not beholden to anyone. However, he declined to confirm the Straits Times report, saying he did not have more details on the settlement. He suggested that questions be directed in state to Treasury Secgen Erwan Sariga Abdullah, who is also 1MDB chairman. My EG's anti-competition fine has climbed to 6.41 million ringgit. This is after it lost an appeal against a 2015 decision by the Malaysia Competition Commission, or MyCC, that it had infringed the Competition Act. MyCC said in a statement today, the sum includes a financial penalty of 2.27 million ringgit and a daily penalty of 7,500 ringgit from 25th of June 2016, which amounts to 4.14 million. However, the total amount may increase should MyEG fail to comply with directions issued by the tribunal. According to MyCC, the reason for the penalty is that MyEG had entered into a deal with RHB Insurance to sell mandatory insurances for the renewal of temporary employment permits for foreign workers. Because of the deal, customers who chose to buy the state insurances via MyEG experienced faster renewal times compared with customers who went for similar services from other companies. This was because of the automatic verification for the RHB insurance product. Binasa Communications, which is en route for listing on the ACE market in less than two weeks, has declared its first quarter earnings. Net profit stood at 1.5 million ringgit on the back of 10.2 million in revenue. There are no comparative figures because this is the telco support service provider's first interim financial report on its consolidated results. Moving forward, it expects to benefit from the future plans and strategies, which includes building a new teleport facility, enhancing its operations and maintenance service, and fiber optic installation and commissioning capability. The company is also sourcing for business opportunities in ASEAN countries, particularly Vietnam, Myanmar, and Laos. It expects its financial performance for FY18 to be satisfactory. Inter-Pacific Research has recommended investors to subscribe for the IPO for its earnings growth potential and attractive dividend returns. It has a target price of 55 cents on the stock and upside potential of 26% from the IPO price of 46 cents. The Inland Revenue Board has slapped MMC Corp with 45.91 million ringgit of additional income tax and penalties on interest expenses relating to certain investments. MMC says it received notices of assessment on December 27 following a tax audit for the years 2011 to 2013. It says that IRB has taken the view that interest expenses relating to certain investments do not qualify for tax deduction under Section 33 of the Income Tax Act 1967. MMC will be making full payment of the additional income tax to the IRB but it believes that there are reasonable grounds to challenge the notices after consulting its tax counsel and will file notices of appeal to the Special Commissioners of Income Tax. MMC adds that the additional income tax is not expected to have any material impact on the group's net assets or gearing for the financial year ending December 31st this year. Chaya Mata Sarawat Group MD Richard Alexander John Curtis will step down from his position this Sunday, December 31st. The group said in a busa filing that Curtis will be redesignated as a non-independent, non-executive director from January 1, 2018. Taking over Curtis's executive role from January 1st will be Isaac Lugun and Go Shi Bing. Lugun will be redesignated from Group Chief Corporate Officer to Group CEO for Corporate, while Go will be redesignated from Group Chief Operating Officer to Group CEO for Operations. We at DHTV would like to wish all our viewers a Happy New Year. We will be back next Tuesday. Have a good long weekend.